Hi all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about how I manage my nitrates in my main display, and that's using sulfur reactors. All right, so I've had a few people ask me how I uh, manage the nitrates in my main tank, and um, when, almost every time when I say uh, I use sulfur, um, people give me a blank stare and then uh, follow up with a heap of questions and um, it's kind of ramped up of late so uh, big shout out to Ranto from uh, Reef Review, he's the one that uh, pushed me into making this video so hopefully it goes a long way to answering your questions but uh, as these things tend to go probably uh, make uh, bring up a few more questions and that's cool, be sure to pop your comments uh, down below and I'll get to those um, as quickly as I can. Now, sulfur, what does it look like? That's a sulfur reactor right there. That's one, that's a uh, Daltec one there. This is a pretty basic reactor. The um, flow comes in through the top, it goes through a tube down the middle, down the bottom, and then up flows back through the sulfur media and uh, back out, you drip it out here. But uh, yeah, have a bit of a look at what the uh, sulfur looks like. It's this yellow bead, it comes in a few different forms, but I find the beads work best. Basically, it's a media, it's, it's unlike really anything else. It's not, a, it's not a bio palette that you want to tumble and get a mulm and, um, things like that. It's not a GFO that you want to tumble. It's not a um, Ciparax, although it's kind of similar to a Ciparax, I guess, um, in that you don't want to uh, tumble this media. You don't want it to grind up and release all sulfur dust. You just want a slow flow going through there. Um, so on a reactor like this, it doesn't have a pump. It just has the water coming in and out. You only really want like a drip or two a second coming out of it. So it's quite a slow flow. Now, Sulfur, I'm not going to go too much into how sulfur works because um, I'm not a chemist and uh, it's not really um, the point of this video. The point of this video is to tell you what I use, how I use it, how to tune it, um, and uh, the different types of reactors available. But I'll give you a brief lesson on uh, what sulfur is. It's a media that was discovered way back in the early, well, it was discovered ages ago, but it was tested in saltwater aquariums way back in the late 80s, early 90s um, as a media to help grow bacteria. And bacteria is like to chew down on things like nitrates. And uh, the bacteria that uh, grows in these sulfur reactors um, is pretty well self-fueling. Um, unlike a bio pellet that, uh, once you get a bio pellet reactor tuned, it produces uh, mulm, which grows a bacteria, which grows, um, produces more mulm and it kind of exponentially takes off. The sulfur reactors are a bit more forgiving and um, a little bit more set and forget. There's a little bit involved in setting them up and that's the whole point of this video, but uh, once you get it running, you're pretty well set. There's a couple of things to watch out for and we'll go over those a bit later. But um, basically, uh, we'll go over the um, calculation required to work out what size reactor you need, how much uh, media you need, how to tune it, um, and then uh, what things you need to watch out for. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so let's start off by taking a look at a few different reactors available. We touched on this Deltec before, which is a, uh, I don't know if there's a better terminology for it, but I'll call it a passive reactor in that it has no recirculation pump. So the water feeding the reactor is also the effluent water. So that's your circulation. This little unit's nice and compact. Um, you can see the tube going down the middle there, which is uh, what takes the inlet water down to the bottom of the reactor and then it upflows back through the media comes to the top and uh, comes out the outlet down there, well that's the inlet I'm pointing to now, and then your outlet's there with a little tap so you can control the speed. Great little reactor, super basic, um, not the most efficient, but uh, cheap and easy and pretty easy to replicate if you've got another type of reactor about. This one here is an Aquamedic, it's got a little, uh, it kind of works a bit like a canister, it's got a little pump built into it, you can see there's your uh, inlet, that feeds into the pump, and there's your outlet which just comes out of the, uh, the lid. It has these little trays for you to sit uh, media in. So we've got uh, two there with sulfur in it and one there with uh, an, or an arm, sorry, uh, like a calcium reactor media, which just uh, helps buffer um, some of the uh, acidic nature from the uh, sulfur. It also helps uh, replenish a little bit of your alkalinity, which we'll talk a bit about later. You can see I was pointing to the uh, recirculation pump there. That's because this unit has a pump inside the tank, which uh, inside the reactor, I guess, which moves the water around. The next one here is this uh, huge uh, Corellin bio denitrator. This is a purpose-built nitrate reactor and has a uh, bulletproof um, Eheim Universal on top, which circulates the water through the uh, reactor itself. You've got uh, an out, or that's the outlet of the pump going down. It's got a tube much like the other one, which goes down through the bottom um, and then upflows back through the reactor again. Uh, this reactor has a little separator plate, so you can separate um, the sulfur and the uh, calcium uh, media. 
um, and it, it works quite well. Uh, it's basically a uh, calcium reactor without a uh, CO2 inlet. So there are a few different types of reactors. You can see I'm going to point to the inlet and outlet and things here. Um, but that pretty well covers the different type of reactors. Of course, you can replicate any of these in a DIY fashion. You can make one of these out of PVC if you wanted to, or you could use an existing um, GFO reactor or something like that. Just remember, you want to have very slow flow going through these things. You don't want the uh, sulfur at any stage to be tumbling. So I guess the next question is, how much sulfur media should you use? Let's get onto that. All right, so let's talk about how much media you're going to need. And that, um, it's almost a bit like asking how long is a piece of string, but don't worry, I'll give you a baseline and then I'll tell you how to adjust from there. My rule of thumb is I like to use one liter of sulfur media per 400 liters. Now that's a starting point and it's a very rough guide and I'd recommend that for someone that's got a tank that has pretty high nitrates already. If you're uh, probably, if you're less than 10 nitrates, maybe go half of that, you can always add more media in. Now, <laughs> Even though this reactor is just pure sulfur, I do recommend having a little bit of uh, calcium reactor meter in there, something like ARM or, or something along those lines. It just helps buffer um, the, the, the acidic nature of the sulfur a bit, and it'll also help replenish a little bit of the alkalinity that this media takes out. Now, that is something I would, do want to discuss a bit further. Sulfur reactors do consume alkalinity, so it is vital that, particularly when setting this up, because once the, uh, the bacteria grows and takes off, you will see an alkalinity consumption um, just go through the roof or through the floor more importantly because you'll see your um, your DKH drop um, like no tomorrow so be prepared to dose a lot more elk which is probably one of the only downsides to um, sulfur. So let's say you've got a 400 litre tank, you've got a uh, one litre of uh, sulfur beads, put a litre of uh, calcium reactor media in there as well and then what I like to do is when you start the reactor off start, uh, go full bowl, run it for two, three days with uh, your effluent speed, the tap wide open. So you'd open this tap up full speed and let the water gush through. Just get all the air bubbles, all the um, channeling, all of the other rubbish out of the reactor. Just get it fully fluidized. Of course, you wanna make sure your media is not tumbling, but these reactors are normally designed and sulfur is not as buoyant as other medias. It does tend to sit compact pretty well, particularly if you've got your calcium reactor media, the heavy stones on top of it. Okay, so you've got your reactor set up, you've got a litre of uh, media in there per 400 litres and roughly a litre of uh, arm or other calcium reactor media in there per 400 litres and uh, your nitrates in your tank are around, let's say, 20 for argument's sake now. What we want to do is, uh, for the first couple of days, we're going to open the effluent speed right up and just let that water flow through the reactor. Just flush out any air bubbles, let it all settle, give it a good, uh, just a good flushing. Once you've done that for a couple of days, slow that effluent right down. So we're gonna get the outlet tap and we're gonna just close that almost completely till we get one drop per second, all right? That's literally drop, 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 drop. You get the idea, one drop per second. Now, what you wanna do is even at that point in time, it won't hurt. You're gonna keep your nitrate test kit out pretty uh, at easy reach for the next few days. Test the nitrate of your effluent there and then. It should be exactly the same as your tank water because you've only just slowed it down. But it's good to get that baseline. So you're gonna test your effluent and you're gonna get probably 20 nitrates. Test it again tomorrow. You'll probably see your nitrates start to drop a little bit from the effluent this is. Not the tank water, the effluent water. Your effluent the next day might still be 20. They might be starting to come down 18, 15. Test it again the next day. At some point in time, you will see your nitrates bottom out. Right? So at some point in time, you'll test the effluent and your nitrates in the effluent will be zero. When you get to zero nitrates on your effluent, speed it up one more drop per second. So we were at one drop per second. Now we're gonna go two drops per second. So we're gonna get drop, 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 drop. You get the idea, right? Thereabouts, it doesn't have to be exact science. Give it another day, give it another two days. Keep watching what you wanna do is basically keep chasing your nitrates. What you wanna do is see the tiniest hint of nitrates coming out of your reactor. So if you see zero nitrates coming out of your reactor, add another drop per second. Just keep speeding it up, giving it another couple of days to catch up and then test it again. Once you get to the speed where uh, no matter how long you leave it, your nitrates coming out of the reactor are at your desired level, whether that be 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1, 2, whatever it is, I don't mind, whatever nitrate you're chasing, leave it there. Your nitrates are coming out of the reactor the level you want, eventually your tank water will catch up or, or you might need to adjust a little bit if your fish are producing more nitrates than the reactor is consuming. Leave it there and you're good to go. Now, if you've got the right amount of sulfur media in there, 
everything's perfect. You can set and forget, walk away, never touch that reactor again. Well, maybe in a year or two, depending how much detritus is in your uh, tank. Because if you get detritus built up in the reactor, it'll get a bit dirty and you need to give the media a clean maybe once every year or two. However, if you got the amount of media in your reactor wrong, you can go one of two ways. You've got too much media in there. And basically, you're not feeding it enough nitrates. No matter how fast you flow the water through there, it's consuming all of the nitrates, and then you'll end up getting a bit of a rotten egg smell coming out of the reactor. If that happens, what you need to do is take half your media out, start the process again, right? If you go the other way and you don't have enough media in there, and you just can't get the nitrates coming out of a reactor to lower enough, no matter, even if you're still at one drop per second and they're still coming out at five nitrates, something like that, you'll need to add more media in. I'd probably go a bit slow on adding the media, probably half a liter I'd add on top of that or a quarter of a liter, depending on how much you got left. Slowly add a bit more media, start the process again. It takes a little bit of effort when you're first setting up, but once you get that uh, effluent at the nitrate level you want, you will set and forget. It's not gonna vary that much. The sulfur is fairly self-regulating. The more nitrates there are, the more bacteria it'll breed. The less nitrates there are, the less uh, bacteria it'll breed. It's, it's a very set and forget process. On my calcium reactor, sorry, on my uh, display tank, I actually, the reason why I got confused there is I actually run an old calcium reactor with my uh, sulfur in it. I only run uh, about a liter and a half to a liter and three quarters of sulfur media in there. I used to run a lot more, hence why I switched to a large calcium reactor for my, uh, for my sulfur nitrate reactor. I find now that uh, as it's maintaining level, rather than trying to bring nitrate levels down, I'm just maintaining, I get away with significantly less media and I don't even run the um, uh, calcium reactor meter in there now. Um, that's probably lazy on my behalf, I should add some in. But uh, I'll give you a bit of an overview of my reactor. You can also see the effluent speed. As I said, I don't need to go a very slow right now, I can speed it right up. Um, so I've got a quite a steady stream uh, coming out of my effluent um, and it keeps nitrates exactly where I want them. So, I guess that's uh, where I can close up guys. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to pop them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a like, uh, a thumbs up on the video. And um, as always, if you wanna see more content, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks guys, bye.